all flow in one direction and not in other direction easily so here food is entering out but not permitted to go out under normal circumstances in case of reverse peristalsis this is possible but under normal circumstances it is not possible esophagus is having average length of 25 cm and in case of peristalsis we have longitudinal and circular motion of the muscles this rhythmic motion that longitudinal longitudinal is this way whereas circular this way so this motion we are calling as peristalsis now after passing out it enters in stomach as we have discussed this is guarded by wall this is called as sphincter now here it enters in stomach this is having j shape so here i am showing little diagram so so this looks like j shape so this is called as j shape stomach now this stomach is divided into further three parts the first part or upper part this is called as cardiac which is in vicinity of heart the second part that is called as fundus f u n d u s and third part that is called as pyloric stomach now the sphincter present here is called as cardiac sphincter whereas sphincter present over here this is called as pyloric sphincter what is the role of stomach whatever we are consuming that food that enters in stomach here it is mixed with different enzymes secreted by uh, present in gastric juice the inside wall of the stomach is having gastric glands and gastric glands they are secreting out a juice that is called as gastric juice the first part of that gastric juice that is the mucus secretion now what is the role of this mucus secretion the mucus is lining over the inside wall that will prevent attack of other gastric juice on wall of stomach the other gastric juice that contains hydrochloric acid try to recall the formula it's hcl it's strong acid the basic function is to destroy insects or any other living organism they are entering purposefully or by mistake and then second thing that it makes food acidic in nature the first action is carried out here that is to convert the food in acidic in nature saliva is basic in nature whereas here that food is converted into acidic but uh, don't consume hcl externally as it is present in stomach i can drink out hcl no because mouth part is in basic medium esophagus requires basic medium and therefore don't try to consume hcl externally it is not we can say recommended thing now hcl is present in stomach but it is mucus lined and therefore the attack is not done we are discussing out now here digestion process slightly separately so first i am explaining the parts here now this is anterior end of stomach guarded by cardiac sphincter this is posterior end of stomach guarded by pyloric sphincter now this stomach stores food temporarily and churns up sanskrit churna so simply it is mixing out properly making fine particles that break down 
into still smaller particle try to recollect our chemistry we have discussed that as particle size is smaller the reactivity is greater the rate of reactivity that depends on particle size so if you are treating out 1 kg of calcium carbonate in form of stone and in form of powder with same concentration and quantity of hcl the rate of reaction is much more greater in case of powder at same temperature rather than entire uh, bulk that means exact stone of limestone or say stone of calcium carbonate which is weighing 1 kg same way here we are making food particles finely divided don't say finally divided so it is finely divided into particles fine particles are there and then different enzymes are mixed properly then from pyloric part the stomach that food through this pincher enters in intestine this is called as other small intestine so this food enters in small intestine the small intestine is smaller in diameter not in length it should be actually properly called as long intestine but we are calling as small intestine so this is small intestine which is having three parts the first part initial part we are calling as duodenum i am revising name it's called as duodenum which is around 25 cm say size of stomach is also in range of 25 to 35 cm same way duodenum size is also 25 cm the first part of this small intestine we are calling as duodenum which is 25 cm then second part that is jejunum j e j u n u m this is 22.5 m so next part here whatever we are observing this is small intestine it is simply coiled and placed in stomach part so what you are the observe here because net length of this intestine is around 6 meters in case of human being we are classified under omnivorous category for herbivorous animals herbivorous means try to recollect veg food those who are consuming only veg food they are called as herbivorous animal they are most of them are able to digest out cellulose cellulose is cell wall which is present outside this uh, plasma membrane so it is present in plant cell and not present in animal cell and that's why if herbivorous animal is there the intestine is longer carnivorous animal is there then intestine is shorter why because uh, as a flesh eating that means there is no question of cellulose digestion and that's why uh, the animal is having smaller intestine a uh, length of intestine whereas in case of omnivorous it is in between so it is not as long as herbivorous and not as short as carnivorous animal still we are calling this is as 6 meter so this way this is coiled in the stomach part the second 2.5 meter average that part we are calling as jejunum now this is narrower than duodenum so i can show this way this is duodenum the next portion is somewhat narrower than duodenum so jejunum is narrower than duodenum but having length greater than duodenum duodenum is having length around 25 cm whereas jejunum is having length around 2.5 m now third part that is ileum i l e u m this is about 3.5 m long and little bit broader than jejunum so which is the smallest diameter part of intestine answer is jejunum now longest part that is ileum 3.5 m and shortest part that is duodenum that is 
25 centimeters that means 0.25 meter so smallest part of that intestine is duodenum now in between this gap there is another gland which is associated with digestion and glucose consumption this gland that is called as pancreas so this is shown over here so in this gap we can find out the pancreas now pancreas are having two parts one is called as exocrine part and another is called as endocrine part now what is exocrine part and what is endocrine part it is basically around the type of enzyme or type of secretion they have you are aware about enzyme and hormone enzymes are secreted by gland in the duct duct is tube and with help of tube that is sent to the proper part where it is required like in this diagram you can show that salivary glands are there so salivary glands and they are releasing out saliva in <clears throat> in the mouth portion same way whatever the glands are produced say pancreas it is producing out pancreatic juice and with help of duct it is entering in duodenum so enzyme is a chemical here at our level we can consider this way that enzyme is chemical or say the triggering out chemical which is produced by particular gland and it is carried through duct and entered in required location then that is called as an enzyme whereas hormone is produced by gland only it is also having similar chemical action like that of uh, like that of hormone uh, enzyme but the thing is that enzymes are secreted and sent to particular location through duct whereas hormones are produced and secreted immediately in the blood blood stream and then through blood they are transmitted to different parts of body where required that means simply here in modern language one can say that enzyme should be considered as landline telephone which is essentially used by wire whereas we can compare our mobile phone with hormone simply waves are secret uh, spread out in all directions and then it is uh, action is taken where required thing is there now same thing is here in case of hormones whenever we are calling that particular gland is secreting out hormone then keep in mind that hormone is secreted by endocrine gland we are calling that part as endocrine gland and if enzyme is secreted we are calling that as exocrine gland so pancreas is having two parts one is called as endocrine and another one is called as exocrine part now exocrine part is secreting out different hormones uh, different enzymes simply i am calling that as your pancreatic juice another largest gland in human body which is associated with digestive process that is liver if you are studying out english particularly the figures of speech then you are aware about pun is life worth living and answer is given it depends upon liver here we are making pun on liver that one meaning is that the one who is living and second it depends upon liver literally english name of liver is useful many functions are carried out by liver you are aware that we are consuming out different toxins toxic substances we are consuming out that is detoxifying that means we are uh, re removing out the toxic nature of that substance 
this is called as detoxification so this detoxification is carried out by liver when person consumes any alcoholic beverage that is containing ethyl alcohol ethyl alcohol is very good it is not at all harmful but when we are consuming out that means inside the body in the blood stream it is absorbed immediately it is converted to acetal dehyde so alcohol is converted into aldehyde in body and acetal dehyde is not good for health acetal dehyde is poisonous when it is present in blood stream and it is showing some unwanted actions now liver plays important role in detoxification of this aldehyde now it's all right that person consumes ethyl alcohol but many time certain drawbacks certain problems are there that in poor nation and for particularly poor people they are producing some unwanted thing that is actually alcoholic beverage is producing some raw matter raw man and at that time certain chemical reactions may go wrong and instead of ethyl alcohol methyl alcohol is producing them then this methyl alcohol is it poisonous answer is no methyl alcohol is also not poisonous but when person consumes methyl alcohol in the body it is converted into formal dehyde which is very very highly poisonous that will lead to death of the person directly and that's why one should what is the best advice one should not consume liquor we have to stay away from this product but suppose if this problem is there that you notice that certain people they are drinking out this type of say deshi or poisonous liquor then till arrival of doctor you can do only one thing that give them rum or whiskey branded the reason is that as long as ethyl alcohol is present in body the enzyme will act only on ethyl alcohol and not on methyl alcohol so as long as there is concentration of ethyl alcohol in blood it will remain that the enzyme will act only on ethyl alcohol and acetal dehyde is produced <coughs> no doubt acetal dehyde is poisonous and formal dehyde is poisonous but formal dehyde is more poisonous than acetal dehyde so till arrival of doctor you can give the infected person or the uh, suffered person pure alcohol that can be available uh, the consumable alcohol now here we have to say consumable alcohol that is present in rum whiskey like that double distilled or say the proper branded because there it is quality checked and so chances of methyl alcohol present is very very here we can consider less and therefore we have to give that and then we have to leave it on doctor but till doctors arrival you can do this so detoxification is then further carried out by the liver another duty of liver that is deamination now certain amino acids are problematic if amino acids are in greater extent and not used by body then also they are problematic so by process of deamination these acids amino acids are converted into ammonia now ammonia is also not helpful for our body in the blood so liver converts out ammonia into urea a less harmful product the process is called as ornithin cycle with help of ornithin cycle this ammonia is further converted into urea and then it is excreted out through kidneys via kidneys urinary bladder and out so this way waste products are thrown away out of body you are aware rbcs are produced 
red blood corpuscles in early childhood phase liver is responsible for production of rbcs later on they are producing bone marrow the inside portion of bone but in initial stages rbcs are produced by liver as well as rbcs are destroyed a particular part is there that is called as kufer cells in the liver they digest out old rbcs these rbcs are destroyed then the material is formed by all these action we are calling that as bile juice which is having yellow color deep yellow color is present in sanskrit we are calling it as pitta ras pitta means yellow so we are calling this as pitta ras or bile juice which is temporarily stored in a part that is called as gall bladder so liver is producing out pitta ras or bile juice from uh, all of these sources and ultimately this is stored temporarily in gall bladder uh, gall bladder no say uh, just i misspelled gall but whenever we are discussing about biology we have to admire a nice designer engineer of human body may we call him as god so multi purpose use say for example now rbc is are destroyed the waste material you have to throw outside the body but it is not immediately thrown outside the body it is used for another purpose say bile juice is basic means alkaline in nature so bile juice is produced in gall bladder that is temporarily stored in liver that is temporarily stored in gall bladder and on requirement from gall bladder through pancreas one duct is coming out this will flow through that duct that is called as duodeno pancreatic duct and through this duodeno pancreatic duct it will enter in duodenum the food present in stomach is acid the moment it enters in duodenum because of presence of bile juice it is first neutralized and then made basic in nature if this bile juice instead of entering in duodenum enters wrongly in blood stream then we are calling this condition as jaundice because this is having yellow color and it is obviously spread in the blood and that's why eyes nails all these portions start appearing yellow whereas because of this yellow color of bile juice our fecal matter feces that is having yellow color what is the sign of jaundice that feces is not having yellow color but urine liver oh sorry uh, eyes nails are having yellow color so this is particular jaundice situation and now we can discuss lots of things about liver one thing we have to discuss and we have to stop about the liver that it is temporarily storing out uh why temporarily because on requirement it is immediately converted so we are using word here temporarily but may be possible it is for longer time also storing out glucose that is in form of polysaccharide that is called as glycogen pancreas that is having endocrine part that endocrine part is called as islets of langerhans these islets of langerhans they are secreting out two hormones namely insulin you are aware of that insulin word and second that is glucagon keep in mind glucagon both of these hormones are initiating process that glucose is converted into glycogen and it is stored temporarily in the liver so with help of this insulin and glucagon glucose in the blood is stored in stomach uh, in liver in form of 
glycogen whenever requirement is there especially during starvation that means fasting if you are not able to get food for a longer time then glycogen is converted into glucose and partly and then glucose is secreted in blood stream and level of glucose is maintained to somehow when animal is fear or angry at that time one gland is there on kidney this is called as adrenal gland and so this adrenal gland secretes out hormone that is called as adrenaline this adrenaline helps to convert glycogen to glucose that means more and more glucose is available in the blood stream 